Now, this week's episode of this wonderful, wonderful anime did something I rarely see done with a character going up against someone who's clearly evil, clearly a maniac, and you should not want to work with them. You should want to run and hide or fight them head on, right? I think back to all the horror movies where there are the option of join me, do this evil chaos, and you too will be able to prosper in my horrible world. And in very noble fashion, the characters always say, I refuse, and either get killed or the movie or show continues on until ultimately they defeat the bad guy, right? But I always have thought, ever since I was a kid, why don't they just say, yeah, I'll work with you, sure, of course, I agree, and the moment they turn around, you kill them, right? Because then they believe in their delusional world that you're on their side. And as I grew up, I realized the reason they don't do that is because there wouldn't be much of a story, and most people, and the way the author does it, is they write a noble reason, like they don't want to discard their humanity as a way to overcome that hurdle. But when you have a morally great character like Venatus, it's very easy for him to convince the viewer watching that, oh yeah, he's definitely playing up this lunatic doctor, but at the same time, they're getting information before they clock the bastard over the head. And honestly, had Noe not jumped in, sure, he probably would have lost an eye, but things probably would have entered more or less where he wanted to go. But I am glad he jumped in, because I don't think he deserves to lose an eye. But it's very rare that I come out of any story where the evil guy clearly is insane, and you should not want to be his friend, but you work with him, or pretend to, and you manipulate him because he's a child, and if you praise him in the right way, and you bring him up, he spills the beans. More stories need to do this. And, like I said, I understand why more stories don't, because it'd be over very quickly and there'd be no story. But when you have a character who's been so morally questionable, is he good, is he evil, and in an episode like this, we actually get a lot of clarification of maybe why he pushes back. That shit I love. It really, really brings a grin to my face. And it was action-packed, it was funny, and honestly, it was pretty emotional towards the end. I actually like seeing Roland as an example, like Hug the Two, and yeah, they have their comedic faces, but... You know, I'm actually hoping we get to see more of him in the future, and we get a taste of, like, what he does in his own time with his group, and how, clearly, he is a headache for the others. So that'll be fun to see where they go, probably in Core 2, I imagine, given that I think we have two episodes left of Core 1, so I doubt we'll focus too much back on Roland and company, but then again, if they do, that'll be a pleasant surprise. But just observing just an episode like this where, honestly, I wasn't expecting it to blow up in the exact way it did, but I also didn't expect it to go as smoothly as maybe they were hoping it would. They were all visibly upset, they were up in arms, and they were ready to clock a bitch. That was how they were feeling, but to see someone who was tortured and was just horribly just violated by this man, and how cool, calm, and collected he was. I think they did a great directing choice of when he would bring up things like, hey, you know, you always were good with my experiments. They would show him smiling and clearly putting on a face, and they'd quickly flash back to the horror, and then they'd go back to the present. Horror, present, horror, present. And you were seeing the cracks show more and more, but he kept his cool, and he made him buy into the bullshit that he was feeding the doctor, and seriously, it would have been interesting had Noe not jumped in. I firmly believe we would have had a one-eyed fanatic, without a doubt. I think he would have given him his eye. I really think either that or he would have tried to manipulate the situation out of that territory, but given what he wanted to know and learn, I think he would have made that sacrifice, which is pretty insane, but given probably what he's went through already in his life, that's probably not even the worst of it, right? So I'm really happy to see, like, the build-up and the relationships form. I mean, I love that the last scene we focus on are the two of them just kind of leaning on each other's back, and Noe coming to the conclusion that rather than him being the doctor and, you know, doing this and that, Really, it's all for him and probably wanting to save himself sort of a thing. And I'm really excited to see where these two's relationship will go because, you know, the first episode pretty much kicks off with, like, the hint that, you know, one's going to kill the other by the time the story wraps up. And there's been this very rocky road dynamic. And now to the point where it almost feels like they can rely and trust on each other. So what will cause more hindrance in the future and what will bring them closer sort of a thing? The action was pretty fun as well. I mean, I really loved in, I think it was last week's episode or the week before, when we got the whole, like, really Full Metal Alchemist-style fight scene, and you have a weapon that's basically a sword whip, which is honestly one of the coolest weapons that doesn't appear in anime enough. 
when you have literally a blade that's a badass, like, almost monster hunter sword, but can also act as a whip, I mean, you gotta use that as much as possible if you know what you're doing in an anime fight scene. And to see the almost, like, mystical acid mind trip that they sort of went on briefly, to then obviously ending in the typical fashion, they open the book and, you know, the rest is history. I do wonder if they're ever going to go more in-depth with the fighting there, because pretty much the formula so far has either been, I guess I'd say the formula has been any time our boy opens the book to finish off the blow, it's the same transition scene, and then it's a different ending. Like, in this case, they turned it into a rock that crumbled, right? So I'm wondering if there's ever going to be more technical explanations of him explaining what's happening, maybe on a deeper level, or if that's something that's never really going to be touched upon. Because, well, I definitely think Battle Shonens, they go too in-depth with explaining what they're doing. I do think there's room for improvement for him to explain more technicalities on the book side, which I hope they'll touch upon more, hopefully, in that second core. It still looks great, sounds great, and it's a visual treat, so it's still good action, but I do hope for maybe a little more explanations down the road, but then again, with the type of anime it is, maybe it doesn't want to go that road, so I guess we'll see. Overall, though, this was a pretty intense episode that had a lot of lightheartedness in the wake of someone who's clearly an insane lunatic that needs to be put not even six feet under, he needs to go to the core of the earth, right? The very center to burn alive. But that's the type of person you want to manipulate and make think that you're on their side. And seriously, there's definitely a what if moment in my mind, what if Noe didn't step in there? And it's pretty horrifying, but I'm glad that he did because I think both him and Roland had enough of it. They had enough of it the moment they stepped into that laboratory, but still, like, I'm glad it ended in the way it did and It'll be very interesting to see what the last couple episodes want to do as we wrap up Core 1 and wait for that Core 2, which is definitely going to have, I think, a lot of fans of this show eager to see where it goes, because this is the type of season that, if it didn't have two cores announced, many people would be jumping into that source material sooner rather than later. I mean, I probably sound like a broken record to anyone who's been keeping up with these reviews, but it's a damn good show. It really, really is. The character dynamics continue to... Just blow me away. I mean, I love the rockiness and unstableness of the Central 2, and the more characters that are being introduced to them. I mean, I really never thought Roland would be a character I would be eager to see again after he's left the main duo's kind of focus and point of view, but I mean, I want him more on screen, I gotta admit. I mean, I'm expecting him not to pop up too much more within the last couple episodes, but like I said, if they do, that'll be a great surprise for me. I mean, this is just a really solid production. Bones hitting it out of the park looks great, sounds great, characters are great, everything about it is just simply fantastic, but y'all know that already. You didn't need me to say that, but I had to say it anyway. Let me know your thoughts and feelings though down below, your thoughts, speculations, if you have any, leave like if you enjoy and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.